Mi nombre es Miguel de León. My name is Pastor Miguel. Uh, mi My es wife's Rolinda. name is Rolinda. And we are at the Casa de Misericordia in Piedras Negras, Mexico. Part of the history of the Casa de Misericordia, it began as a dream about five or six years ago. It came to us as we were going through the colonies of Piedras Negras, and we saw many badly treated children, sons and daughters, boys and girls of alcoholics, drug abusers, prostitutes, children whose fathers were imprisoned because of drug charges, and all of this got to, to our hearts, and we had to do something. On January the 10th, 2005, we received our first three children. When we first began, we had no employees at all. It was a difficult beginning. Some people stayed one day, one week, one person, only one hour, and it was very difficult for us. It was all voluntary at that point. We began receiving more volunteers, and thanks to God, God kept sending us more people to help out. We have people helping in the kitchen, taking care of the children, and of course, as you can see now, we have many children. How did the children arrive here? Well, the majority of them are brought here by a government institution. For example, children from problem homes, children that are being mistreated, children that have been beaten, sexual violation of the children. Clearly, most of the children are coming from very difficult or problematic homes. Some of the children are found wandering the streets and roads of Piedras Negras, and the officials pick them up and bring them here. Many of the children arrive sick, and we have to take them to the doctor, buy them medicine, and of course some of the children need, need clothing. We have to buy them or get clothing for them. We don't receive any money from the government, just children with very deep wounds of the heart. El niño puede regresar con ellos si en seis meses. If the parents, the father or the mother, continue to have difficulty with drugs or violence, they lose the right to continued parentage of their children. And at that point, the children become available for adoption or candidates for adoption. One of the most difficult challenges we've had over the last two and a half years is finance. We never know from day to day, from month to month, how much money we're going to have for food, electricity, gasoline, to fill the bus, to carry the children into school. We just never know how much the offering collections are going to be. And that's one of the most difficult things, not knowing how, what your economic resources are going to be uh, from day to day because they're not fixed. One of the biggest things that the churches can help continue to help us with, well, in addition to the construction, which has been a big help, um, the, the painting and the, of course, construction of the uh, orphanage, but the biggest thing that we need help with is the operation, the continuing operation of the orphanage. For example, food for the children, lighting, electric, gasoline, all of these things cost money. There are no resources for caring for the children. That's one of the problems with the Mexican government. Only private resources are available to take care of the children. We believe this is one of the best orphanages in the area. We get to see from the time the children are brought here the change that this love and security creates for the children. How how their hearts are healed and how much it changes them within just a few days. 
the love of God in their heart has changed them. They're just completely different people. Adios.